But why, Tyler? I just don't want you associated with me right now. It, these are dangerous men, Liz. But they wouldn't harm me for what you've done. I don't want to take any chances. Look, don't trust anybody, Liz. You hear me? Trust no one. Tyler, this is silly. It's so unnecessary. If you're in trouble, if you need to talk to somebody, phone this number. He'll help you. His name's Gilhooly. Daniel Gilhooly. He's a good man. The Sensitive. Terma. By Alistair Jessamine. Come on in, Joe. It's just paranoia as far as I'm concerned. Sit down. Inspector Waller says the super. The city is becoming ungovernable. Ungovernable, for God's sake. The Canards are a couple of low-life white boys. They're hardly the mafia. A murdered procurator. Witnesses retracting their statements. A lot of very frightened people, John. Hardly the mafia. Ungovernable. He's insisting the Canards have placed someone in the department here. Or in the Crown Office, or, or somewhere. Somewhere with influence. Well, it makes sense, Chief. Too many cul-de-sacs. Too many investigations falling apart. Too many people not talking. <sighs> and Tyler Craig. How long since he disappeared? A month. Uh, it doesn't look good, does it? Okay. He's a priority now, Joe. If anybody can help us bring down the canards, it's Tyler Craig. His evidence could be crucial. We need to find him. Oh, Venice, eh? What a dump. You got all the rough gigs. No, I'm just saying I could do without it right now. Yeah, why go to an international film festival in the most beautiful city in the world when you can stay in Glasgow and enjoy the sleet, eh? <laughs> well, at least you'll get a bit of peace and quiet, Tommy. Aye, aye. Finish Anna Karenina. Eh? Get that job application done. I can't see you working at a dentist. You hate dentists. I'd be answering the phone. I wouldn't be party to any violence. Anyway, I need to work, Kat. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Flight 763 to Verona is now available for boarding at gate number two. Well, that's me, Tommy. Right. Have a great time. Mm. Bye, Tommy. Bye. I'll ring you when I get there. Yeah. Oh, Kat. Uh-huh? If you see Brad Pitt, tell him from me his last film was rubbish. <laughs> well do. <laughs> Thomas Sitter. Hello, Thomas. It's D.I. Crawford. We might have something for you. Oh, Thomas. Uh, thanks for coming. Joe. Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Gilhooly. Nice to meet you, sir. I've heard a lot about you. Uh, join us on the bench, Thomas. Huh. Thanks. Can I get you anything from the van there, sir? A cup of coffee? They do some fine bacon roll. I'm okay, thanks. Tyler Craig Thomas. You heard of him? The journalist? That's right. He disappeared a month ago. He did those articles on the Kinnaird brothers? Aye. Recently he'd been building up a file of evidence which he reckoned could put the Kinnairds away for life. He came over to my house the night before he disappeared. I think he was almost ready to tell us what he knew. Was he working with you? In a manner of speaking. So, you were the last person to see him, Sergeant? We reckon so. He left the house about midnight in a taxi. Left his car at my place because we were both kind of well-oiled, you know. Uh, never came back for it. He was frightened, I could tell. He was quite aware of what these people could do, but excited. He knew he was on to something. I've enough material here to nail them five times over. So why wait, Tyler? We, we can give you all the protection you need. I'm not quite ready yet, Danny. Not quite. What was he waiting on, do you think? Gathering a bit more evidence. I don't know. He played his cards close to his chest, Tyler. What do you think happened to him? I tend to suspect the worst, sir. I think the canards have got to him. Well, he could be biding his time, lying low. Maybe. But I didn't think he was about to go into hiding. We're, we're very keen to find the man, Mr. Souter. Why ask me? I mean, frankly, 
Your boss has never had much time for me. Chief Inspector Waller is keen to explore every avenue of inquiry. Hmm. You mean he's desperate? Perhaps uh, you'd like to come over and have a look at Tyler Craig's flat. If you're interested. Quite an austere little place. No pictures. No telly. Oh, no. Tyler didn't have time for the television. He was dedicated to one thing. He wanted to get the canards. A couple of weeks ago, somebody broke in. We had the place under surveillance, but they got in through a skylight upstairs. They trashed the place, emptied every drawer, ripped up the floorboards. What were they looking for? Same thing we were, I suppose. Tyler's files, documents, whatever. And they broke in how long after Tyler disappeared? About two weeks. So if they did get hold of Tyler, it implies they didn't get what they wanted from him. Tyler can be an obstinate man. I don't have much of a sense of him. He was lonely. I reckon he was. Not many friends at all. I think Danny here was about the closest he got. Well, there was a girlfriend. He split up with her about three months ago. Is there something else I could have? Uh, a watch or something he wore? Danny? On the hook there? The scarf and hat. He wore them a lot. Would they do? Yeah, they'd be fine. There we go, sir. Thanks. He wasn't very fashion conscious, I must say. A weight. He was carrying a huge weight. Carrying it alone. These are our contact details, Thomas. Uh, We'd appreciate it if you didn't talk about this to anybody. Why all the secrecy? Well, we're dealing with bad men, sir. Men with a lot of connections, you know. I bet you're loving it. Bit of peace and quiet for a change. No filthy ash trees to empty. No, no, I've gone to the dogs without you, Kat. Surrounded by empty whiskey bottles and pizza boxes. Actually, right now, the floor is covered in ordnance survey maps. You got a missing person? Yeah, I'm not meant to talk about it, but... I'm sitting here with my pendulum poised, wearing his scarf and his hat and his reading specs. I must look pretty weird. Actually, his reading specs are better than mine. Did I disturb you? No, no, nothing was coming, anyway. So, seen any good movies lately? Oh, God, I'm movied out. There was one, though. A lovely film. Mm. Tibetan. It's called Terma. I've reviewed it for next week's paper. Terma? It means hidden treasure. Hidden in the earth. Or hidden in your mind. It's about a Tibetan monk who's searching for this important book. So Just after the train. Tyler, we can give you and he's crossing over to me. India. But he doesn't... Trust no one. Tommy? Tommy, you still there? Still here. I just wait until the pendulum here rests over the spot on the map. It's, it's kind of intuitive. Yeah, that's fascinating. I've got a strong reading here. A rev circle? Aye. A reading, sir? Where your man might be. Here, south side. Cathcart. Cathcart. Is that significant? Possibly. It might be worth driving me over there. Right. Right. Amazing, eh? The human mind. My Andy Mary, she was psychic. She could foresee the future. She used to read our tea leaves, you know. She had to give it up, though. She was blinded by a firework. She didn't foresee that, the old soul. Danny. Right. Cathcart. Shall we go, then, Thomas? Uh, aye, aye. Better take this map. Oh, listen. 
I read in this morning's paper the judge shot in his home. Aye. You think the Canaries were behind it? It's possible. Pretty certain, I'd say. Lord Donnelly was killed by two shots fired at point blank range. The High Court judge had recently been presiding over the trial of Thomas McCleary, a business partner of the Canaird family. Mr. It's McCleary off, was in trial for All right. after a brief. You all right back there, sir? Kind of impressive, but yeah, you know what's happened, don't you, Joe? You don't think you might have got your wires crossed, Mr. Souter? Hmm? What? Oh, it's nothing. You just need to leave him, Danny. To work things out for himself. Uh, turn left here, Sergeant. Okay. Uh, and down to the bottom there. At the bottom, uh huh. A real way, yes. Kennels. Ah, there are kennels, good. That house set apart. Just here? Yeah, here. So, would you like to come in for a cup of tea, sir? Sorry? This is my house. certainly didn't come down here. Certain? <sighs> it's such a strong sense of him. There's something here. Well, look for yourself, Mr. Souter. My lawnmower, my wine rack, my gardening tools. That's it. <sighs> this little door. Just uh, empty cardboard boxes in there. You seen enough, Thomas? A bit of a dead end, I'm afraid. Could you give me a minute? Aye. We'll see you up there. There you go, Danny. Thanks. We don't have time for this nonsense, Joe. But trust me, Danny. If anybody can find a needle in a haystack, it's him. Find anything, sir? Uh, no. Afraid not. Your, uh, milk, Thomas? Yes, thanks. Okay. Uh, could I ask what you and Tyler were talking about that evening, Sergeant? I, I can't remember everything, to be honest. Uh, we'd both had a, a bit to drink, you know. Hmm. Basically, he was asking me a load of questions about our investigations into the Canards. So, in a way, you were helping him? Rather than him helping you, if you see what I mean? You were helping him in a kind of unofficial capacity. A unofficial capacity, that, that's about right, sir. Yes, between ourselves. Fact is, we were getting ready to go to court. Tyler reckoned he had the information that would make all the difference. Hmm. You mentioned a girlfriend. Mm. Ex-girlfriend, uh, an artist. They trashed their place about two weeks ago. One of our boys is keeping an eye on her. She, she hasn't seen Tyler for about three months. Hmm. Can I meet her? We can arrange that, yes. What kind of evidence did Tyler have against the Canards? Well, like I say, Mr. Souter, he, he didn't share a lot of the detail. <sighs> You're keeping things from me. How do you mean, sir? Just that. Why are you both so cagey? Thomas, there's things you don't need to know. How am I meant to help if you're not telling me the whole story? It's for your own safety, genuinely. Uh, and there's not a lot to tell. Tyler didn't quite trust me yet. That was the problem. He, he didn't trust anybody. He told me very little. A sense of him. Yeah. Here. In this house. Trust no one. <laughs> Now, I can assure you, I can assure you that we are doing everything in our power to track down Lord Donnelly's killer. 
Inspector Waller, do you believe that the murder of Lord Donnelly is connected to the murder of the Procurator Fiscal Robert McRae? All I can say at the moment is that we're not ruling out any possible line of inquiry. Why is there still no progress on the McRae investigation? <laughs> there has been progress. What ah. progress? But as yet, no arrests. Lord Donnelly was presiding over the trial of a business partner of the Kinnaird brothers. Is there any truth in the rumour that Robert McRae had also been... Well, I can't comment on rumours. <sighs> yeah, well, what can you comment on? Do you believe that the murder of Lord Donnelly is <laughs> Again, I can't comment on that. It's been over a month since Tyler Craig went missing. <sighs> Tyler Craig. Where are you? I could have sworn. Where are you? It's monstrous. I'm not doing much work at the moment. Kind of difficult with a cop permanently on my doorstep. You make a living from your painting? Yes, I do. I'm very lucky, really. Well, Tyler would have said it's nothing to do with luck. But I know plenty of people, far more talented than me, who are really struggling. I do all right. Did. This has really thrown me. Oh, I'm sorry. I destroyed a lot of canvases, actually. Some of my best stuff. Pulled the whole cottage apart. What do you think they were looking for? I don't know. As if Tyler was going to leave anything in the cottage. This happened about a fortnight ago? Yeah. When was the last time you saw Tyler, Liz? A few months back. He came to break up. He still loved me. But he didn't want me to come to any harm. I thought he was just being paranoid. A beautiful spot. Tyler loved it. It was a retreat for him. It's spoiled for me now. I'm going to have to move. Shame. It is a shame. But I know they're out there, watching the place. Was there anything he said that might give us a clue to where he is? D did he leave you anything? A gift? Something that might seem innocuous? No. He never talked to me about his work. He did never give me anything that might expose me to any danger. He was a good man. Is a good man. He told me to trust nobody. Except for your friend back there. Oh, Sergeant Gil Hooley. Yeah. And there was nobody else who Tyler might have confided in? Please. Mr. Suter. No more questions. A psychic. Tyler would find it kind of amusing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. It's all right. Do whatever it takes to find him. Feels a bit unreal though, Tommy. Movie in the morning, cocktails at the balcony at lunch. Oh, poor you, eh? <laughs> Here, Kat, did you know Tyler Craig when you were at the Herald? Tyler? Well, a bit, yes. What was he like? Well, a great journalist. But nobody ever knew Tyler. He never socialised. He was very intense, bit of a one for conspiracy theories and things. It made me a bit weary of him. Has he turned up yet? No. Is he your missing person? I'm unable to comment at this particular juncture. Uh huh. Hmm. Uh, thanks for the photos, by the way. What photos? The ones of you by the pool at the hotel in Venice. I didn't send you any photos. 
Seriously? Seriously. Oh, must be one of your friends having a laugh. Buy a pool, mucking about. Aye, but... That's weird. Who could have sent them? Oh, I don't know. Oh, well. Look, I, I need to go, Kat. OK, Tommy. Lots of love. You too. Bye. The reading was definitely pointing to this area, Postle Park. Mm-hmm. I had images of small buildings, garages maybe, and this noise. Look, about the photographs, if you want to pack it all in, Thomas, we'd, uh, we'd more than understand. Have they done this to you? Of various little warnings like that, yes. They sent me photos of the kids coming home from school. I'm sorry to have involved you in all this. Is it a serious threat? Or are they just trying to rattle me? Well, I'd, I'd like to say they're just trying to put the wind up, but, uh, but I think we need to take it seriously. I think you should have some protection now, sir. Mm. I mean, if it was just me... Of course. I think I might just follow up this reading and then stop. I think, I think that's best. Catching sight of you in the mirror, sir. That hat and scarf. You look so much like him. <laughs> Spooky, you know. Hmm. That Toyota behind us. Yeah, I wondered that. It's a bloody waste of time anyway, Joe. Let's just take him home now. It's turning off. Ah, yes. Yeah, could you slow down a bit? Uh, uh, turn left, towards that scrapyard. He's standing here, looking through the barbed wire, staring at it. Staring at the cart crusher? Seems terrible to him. A symbol of something. What he's fighting against. It's monstrous. And those lockups over there. They took him into one of those. Well, which one would that be? I'm not sure. Get the tool bag, Danny. Well, which door would you like me to start with, Joe? Or, or do you want me to break into them all? No warrant. CCTV, there, there! It's monstrous. One of these two doors. This one, I think. Sure. Said that about the last one, Mr. Sitter? No, definitely this one. So, where is he hiding then, sir? Thomas? Yeah, hold on. Is, is that a drain? Can we lift the cover? You've got a chisel, Danny. Uh, here. Oh, God almighty. Oh, there's something here. It's plastic. Oh, God. Look at his face, Joe. Look at what they've done to him. Animals. Thomas. I think... I think it'd be better if you had no more to do with us. Hmm? Uh, sorry, Joe. Uh, no more to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, 
You might not see anything in the papers about it. Well, not just yet, anyway. <laughs> if you could just trust us. Uh, yeah. Uh, I need to go outside. There's a fresh air. Sure. Which mortuary? Well, not Glasgow. And I have to be somewhere else. What do you want? Away from the window, please. Where's Constable Peters? Never mind him. What do you want? Tyler Craig gave you something. To keep. To keep safe for him. I don't know what you're talking about. Into the bedroom. No! I... She's in Ward 12. We should have had more than one man looking after her. Now phone me if she regains consciousness. I'm going over to the cottage. Seemingly, the only things they've left intact are the walls. They're desperate, the bastards. Uh, before you go, gentlemen, the psychic, Thomas Souter. Now, what the hell do you think you've been playing at? He's been very useful in the past, sir. Well, get rid of him. I, I don't know how you thought you'd get away with it. You've been under surveillance, we all have. My boss thinks we've got Canard's men coming out of the woodwork, and for all I know, he might be right. We've got the press baying for her blood, and in the middle of all this, you start running around with a bloody psychic. We'll discuss this further. For the moment, get over to the hospital. And do nothing. Go nowhere until I give you the say-so. Understood? Sir, Chief. We Did Mr. Souter find anything? Nothing, sir. It was a complete waste of time. Thomas Sutter. Mr. Sutter, it's DCI Waller. Have you got five minutes? I'm no longer working on the case, Mr. Waller. I thought Inspector Crawford would have told you that. There have been some further developments, sir. Miss Cook, Liz Cook, she's been badly beaten and her cottage ransacked again. Will she be all right? Oh, we don't know yet. She's in intensive care, still unconscious. Oh, God. Even so, Inspector, I'm afraid I... I, I don't feel I can get involved. I don't want to put my own partner at risk. Your partner? Yeah, the photographs... I'm afraid I don't follow, sir. A few days ago, I was sent some photographs of my girlfriend. She didn't send them. We think it was a warning from the Canards. Didn't you know this? No, no, I didn't. It's often how it starts. How? What starts? Perhaps we could meet this afternoon, sir. No, I told you, Mr Waller. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm bowing out. Now, what I need to say is for your own safety, and presumably your partner's, how much have Crawford and Gilhooly told you about the case? Not as much as I'd like to know. OK, I'll fill you in. And there are things I need to ask you. I can't really talk over the phone, sir. I'm at Miss Cook's cottage. Could you meet me here? OK. And please, don't mention this to Crawford or Gilhooly. What I need to say very much involves them. Just check the grounds again. We don't want to be disturbed. Sir. Thanks for coming, Mr. Souter. What a mess. God. Aye. Any more news about how she is? No. 
They came early this morning, knocked our man unconscious, and I assume tried to extract some information from Miss Cook. What kind of information? <laughs> Who knows? Well, they're clearly looking for something. This is the second time they've raided the house. Yeah. So, what's this about, Inspector? You mentioned Crawford and Gilhooley. Uh, before I go into that, sir, do you have any sense of where Mr Craig might have hidden something? You know, documents, a file, a computer? No, no, I don't. Are you sure? Sorry, I've drawn a bit of a blank, Mr Waller. No clue or inkling at all? Afraid not. Right. Pity. I didn't know Crawford and Gilhooley were working with you till a couple of days ago. Uh, we'd been watching them, but they've been very careful. We think they're working for the Canards. <laughs> you didn't suspect? What proof do you have of this? Oh, we have proof. And basically, I need to know anything they told you, Mr Souter, about the Canards, about Tyler Craig particularly... Anything that might seem significant. And I need to know... Hang on. Speak of the devil. I told them to specifically wait my instructions. Gentlemen, what brings you here? Well, Mr. Souter brought us here. Phoned us. Just after you phoned him. Wise man, I'd say. We've been parked up on the ridge, John. Been up there a while. We wouldn't want Thomas here to come to any harm. Now, what are you talking about? We know. You know what? That you're Canaird's man. What? You heard. It's you who's working for the Canaird's. And what evidence do you have for this? Oh, plenty. Such as? Tyler Craig gave us a few interesting tidbits for a kick-off. That you'd met up with Thomas McCleary, the Canard's business partner, at least twice. And Tyler tailed you to a flat in Bailiston, which we know was used by the Canards. That was a bit indiscreet of you, wasn't it, Chief? So, based on a few lies that Tyler Craig fed you... They weren't lies. Our witness to the Robert McCray killing, why did she retract her statement? I saw how afraid she was of you, that's when I knew. <sighs> A couple of months ago in the Nelson Hotel, I was at the other end of the bar getting our drinks. Andrew Rennie walked in. And who's he? One of the Canard's lawyers. I caught sight of you in the mirror shaking your head at him, as in, don't approach, don't talk to me. We know, John, and you know it. So we can stop pretending, eh? I need to ask you to hand over Tyler Craig's body. We can't do that. I need to remind you of how brutal these people can be. Oh, no, sir. Tyler's face was quite a picture. They got a bit overzealous, didn't they? Can't get much information out of a corpse. See, I was always totally against violence. Well, that's why I wanted to talk to Mr Souter here. To avoid any more. Or because you were panicking. And wanted to know if we had anything on you and the canards. Or if Tyler had left us a present. Uh, you have nothing on me, gentlemen. I know that. No, you don't. You're scared out of your wits. They're going to come for you. You know that, don't you? All three of you. Thomas doesn't have anything to do with this. He knows nothing. Maybe, but my friends are now taking him very seriously. Look, if Craig gave you anything, for God's sake, he didn't crack, but, but not many people are that resilient. Whatever Tyler knew... Whatever he hid away, well, that secret died with him. We know nothing. Well, if that is true, then I'm genuinely sorry. Help us, then. That's why we're here. We want you to help us. I can't do that. Why not? You could destroy them, John. I'm sorry. So you're going to let them come after us? Hand over Tyler Craig's body and any information he gave you and I'll see to it that you won't be touched. Strange thing. I really looked up to you at one time. What made you sell out? Was it the house? The yacht? Was it the yacht? <laughs> you really think it was that straightforward? Think about what I've said because you don't have very long. Before you go, sir... 
Tyler Craig was a very brave man. It seems such a pity that he's dead and you're still alive. Wrong way round somehow. You don't have a family, do you, Danny? No. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'm sorry, Thomas. Why didn't you tell me about Waller from the start? We thought it best to tell you only what you needed to know. I'm safer. And we didn't know for certain that Waller was involved. We knew. We just didn't have any hard evidence. Don't have any evidence. But he's desperate, Joe. He wouldn't show himself like this if he wasn't. Whatever it is they're looking for, they know it would nail them. Terma. Sorry, Thomas? A terma is a hidden treasure. Hidden in the earth, or hidden in your mind. I'm not with you, sir. I just have a sense he gave you something, Sergeant, that night at your house. What were you talking about? Well, I, I told you, sir. He said he'd got hold of enough information to destroy the canards. Uh, he said he had stuff on Waller, too. But Tyler, all the information we gave you on Waller, it's all unsubstantiated. It's guesswork, man. Except I've been able to back it up. Hi. I have enough material here to nail them five times over. So why wait, Tyler? We can give you all the protection you need. I'm not quite ready yet, Danny. Not quite. Need to cross the I's and dot the T's. Oh, bloody radiator. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I realised how genuinely scared he was. The radiator fired off and... <laughs> He almost jumped out of his skin. Big joke, you know. But then he said something that kind of chilled me. Listen, Danny. If they ever find me at the bottom of a lock, drink a toast to me, would you? With this. I should keep my promise, huh? Drink a toast to me. Aye. Did he indicate with what? Danny? He brought three balls. We just drank the two of them. The third one was expensive. He, he put his hand on the bottle. Oh, how could I have been so stupid? He has such a strong sense of him. There's something here. Well, look for yourself, Mr. Souter. My lawnmower, my wine rack. My gardening tools, that's it. This is the one, Abarolo. Hmm, not a Barolo, that's for sure. That's water. There's something in there, see? Where's the towel? Oh, carefully, Danny. How did you get that in there? It's wrapped in polythene, whatever it is. Where are your scissors, Danny? A top drawer there. Would you like to do the honours, Thomas? Uh, yeah, sure. Tyler, you genius. I'm in out, stick. <laughs> you bloody genius. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. A whole file on Waller. All backed up, Danny. Times, places. Click there. <laughs> no wonder they were desperate. Oh, Tyler. Tyler, you have nailed them all good and proper. Times, dates, people. Colour coded. Let's send off a few emails, shall we? Aye, you never know who's going to suddenly drop down the chimney. And then we shall have a toast or two. <laughs> mm, beautiful wine, Tommy. Mm. Well... Daniel Gilhooley has good taste. The sergeant. Aye. 
Sorry you had to come back to all this. Mm. To six bottles of fine wine. <laughs> well, it was exciting, really. To be escorted home in a police car. Yeah. They're going to be on our doorstep for a while, I'm afraid. Leave you alone for a week, eh, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd met him. Tyler? Hmm. He was a brave man. To Tyler. Tyler. What'll happen to Inspector Waller? Oof. Don't know. Dear Lisa, I am so sorry. But there is no alternative. It was for the kids, for you, I did it all. And please try to understand that. I was so scared of what they might do to you. So scared of losing you all. But in the end, I lost you anyway. It was all lost, all finished. The first time I... I looked the other way. It seemed such a small thing at the time. Whatever. I'm so sorry. Finished. It's finished now. All my love. John. In the Sensitive, by Alistair Jessamine. Thomas Souter was played by Robin Lang. D.I. Crawford by Simon Tate. Gilhooley, David Ireland. D.C.I. Waller, Lewis Howden. Cat, Julie Duncanson. Tyler, Alistair Hankinson. And Liz, by Lucy Hollis. Other parts were played by the cast. The Sensitive was a BBC Scotland production directed in Glasgow by Bruce Young. <laughs>